Dear Africa Business Jumpstarters, a very, very warm welcome to our live training on how to import from Africa in five simple steps. I'm really excited um, about spending this time with you and let's dive in straight away. So today we will discuss how to start a profitable African import business in five simple steps. So you can start making money importing African agribusiness products into the world, even when a pandemic hits. Now, I want to start this session with a story. And um, the story is that um, during one of my last visits to Rwanda, we visited one of the factories that is processing produce, you know, agricultural produce for export. It is processing um, cassava, cassava into cassava flour. Now we were heading outside of Kigali, about three hours outside of Kigali. And after we had been shown around the factory, we then met with some of the cassava farmers who were invited to the factory to speak with us. Now I do not speak Kenya Rwanda, but we had some translators and, um, you know, there was an elderly farmer Maybe I shouldn't say elderly in my age anymore, but he was in his late 60s, maybe. And um, he shared the story that he had been a cassava farmer his whole life. And for the most part of his life, he had been owning and planting on two hectares of land. And then he said to us, since this factory was set up in our area about six years ago, I managed to go from two hectares to 40 hectares. That's four zero hectares uh, in that time. And um, I'm gonna I'm going to go back and make sure. Please don't don't unmute yourself. So, all right. So that is a beautiful story, and that is the reason um, why we are here because this farmer managed to go from two hectares to 40 hectares just because there was a factory processing what he's planting and then exporting it into the world. And that really demonstrates how powerful it is, how impactful it is when we, um, you know, trade African Afri Afri um, African agribusiness goods into the world and how it will change um, the lives of the people that are actually producing these products at the very bottom line. And therefore, um, you know, I want to really um, dedicate this training session today to the many farmers and herders across Africa who very often, you know, live at the poverty line. And I want you to understand that when you are becoming an importer and you start importing exports from Africa or you are importing within Africa as part of the intra-African trade, you will impact in significant terms on the lives of others. And um, in this factory, I want to say also in this factory, we were surrounded in the warehouse by tons and you know, tons of cassava flour. And I've never seen so much flour in my life. And here's the thing, the factory manager said, we are not shifting enough flour fast enough. And that's where you come in, the Africa Business Jump Stunters. That's the role I want you to take on so we can build wealth for ourselves while also uplifting the lives of others. So these are some of the products that we will be discussing today. We will be focusing on Africa business products um, and products that are high in demand in the world and in particular the West. I want you to let I want to let you know that everyone can do it no matter where in the world you're based. You may be based outside of Africa or on the continent, and it also does not matter what your budget is. And I will show you different importing business models um, that allow you also to get started on a shoestring budget. And again, I will, um, you know, that's the that's the thing when you go on Zoom. Let me quickly go back to you 
And please don't unmute yourselves. I'm going to mute everyone because if you unmute yourself, um, we can't have an interrupted audio. Um, but then that's the price I'm paying to see your face, faces, you know, um, so we can come together as a community. Hence, please, again, don't unmute yourself. Thank you so much. All right. So let's go back. Okay, so switch off your mobile phones um, and let's just focus because what you're going to learn today, you won't be learning anywhere else, dear Africa Business Jump Starters. First of all, my name is Dr. Harnett. I'm a certified business trainer. I'm an Africa business trainer and consultant, an entrepreneur, speaker, author, a champion for Africa and a proud mom. My um, content and my work has been featured on the likes of Forbes Africa, the KLM Air France Africa Business Club, um, the renowned Africa Business CEO Forum uh, on BBC Tigrinya, and the Africa Business Conference uh, at Harvard University, where I was leading a panel and I was also speaking at Google. So I'm just letting you know um, that I have been, you know, an Africa business trainer and consultant for um, six years now. And I just want to let you know that what you're going to learn today is something really tangible. It is not fluff. It's also not kind of a quick, you get, get rich quick scheme because, because I'm going to share with you how you can start, you know, a proper business from scratch and how to do it the right way. So as we have, as we all know, our world has changed because suddenly we were hit by a pandemic. The continent um, of Africa was hit, um, the West, Asia, and for all of us, for those of us in business, for those of us in employment, uh, you know, our lives have changed and have kind of been turned upside down. And that also means that the way we are going to show up in the world has to change. You know, uh, our employment may not be as safe anymore as we thought it may be, um, but we also see a major shift in the world happening. And that's what I want to quickly discuss with you because that is a very important context for why I believe the Africa business model importing from Africa is so relevant and has never been more relevant than it is today. So what we can see really is that um, I believe we're going to see like a restructuring of let's maybe call it the world order even. So that means that some, com uh, some countries, you know, will gain in relevance where maybe others will lose in relevance and we can see this kind of trend and, and happening across the globe. And the media is very much picking up on that. And it is, of course, very much focusing on China and the change of position of China, which was really the, the, you know, the, the world's hub for manufacturing. And a lot of the supply chains, the global supply chains have been uh, really depending heavily on China. Now, that is being discussed and we can already see that companies and businesses worldwide are looking for alternative supply chains. Do you know that about 80% of the world's supply chains came from China? This is, you know, this is crazy that how many businesses are really depending uh, on China. And that is the case for Africa but it's also the case for the rest of the world. And now, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of businesses are looking to alternatives. They do not want to, be to depend on a single market. Why? Because they have realized it is a risk to their business. Now, on the contrary, then, uh, we can also see that Africa's position is you know, um, being discussed. And we can see that a lot of businesses are looking towards Africa for an alternative. Now, that may not so much 
apply to goods like you know um, electronics uh, or things like te that technology, but it certainly applies to um, you know certain uh, products that Africa can supply. And here you have a you know an article that says as coronavirus disrupts supply chains, could Africa profit? And what we see now is a a new positioning of the continent of Africa in, every, you know, in that context of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that is very, very important for you to understand. Now, what's happening at the moment on the continent is also that, for example, Ethiopian Airlines and Kenyan Airways, uh, just two examples, you know, you know that airlines have been heavily depending, of course, on tourists and business travelers. Now, all of that has been shut down and we can see airlines being struggle, uh, struggling across the world. Now, what these two airlines have done in Africa, they have diverted from, uh, you know, transporting people to transporting goods and going into cargo. Now, both of them, you know, Ethiopia Airlines, for example, so they have cargo planes already, but these are usually smaller planes because they were not focusing in their business on, uh, you know, the, the transport of goods. They were rather focusing on the transport of people. And what you can see actually below is a picture um, of Ethiopian Airlines. And this is a picture, if you can realize, um, in in the cabin where usually people would be sitting and guess what they have taken extreme measures and are now filling these these seats um, with goods and you can see here it reads fresh vegetables so the reason why i'm sharing this is because no matter what happens in the world and even if a pandemic hits the trade and the retail of food and hygienic items, skincare items will continue. Now that is very, very relevant for you to understand because you know, according to experts, the pandemic could stay with us for some time, for years. And even if it doesn't, people will now be aware to make sure that their businesses are kind of, you know, um, not prone towards another pandemic if it should hit. And this is important for the context for all of you listening today, that the kind of business model I'm explaining today and, you know, the five steps to how, how to set this up that I want to share with you today very much depend on um, um, this uh, this timing now uh, and this pandemic. Now, the right timing for this business model is now. And for those of you who are already in business, you may also know that getting the timing right is very, very crucial for your success in the world. Um, your business success will increase when you get the timing for your business right. And therefore, it is a success contributor and right now, I want to let you know the timing is right for you to start training, uh, sorry, to start trading uh, agribusiness goods from Africa. And I've explained the context because the context is hugely relevant. Now, as I said, I want this web class to be relevant and actionable. And so the question is, dear Africa, business jump starters. Are you ready? Let me check with you. Let's see um, in the chat box. Can you hear me well? Are you ready? I shared some context and it's very important for you to understand this context. And let's start with the training. Okay, fantastic. Yes, ready. Excellent. Ready and moving. I love that. Great. So let's get started with the training. All right, so first of all, I want to start with some inspiration. 
And that is, I want to show, I want to show you that there are people out there who are already trading with Africa. And in particular, I want to let you know success stories of Africans who are doing this already. So this is Ate Atabong, who is based in Norway. He's a former pharmacist, and now he's an Africa importer who actually started, you know, with what I teach and with the training I give. And he writes to me, Dr. Harnett, I want to thank you and all who have been participating in our journey of launching our African products in Norway and soon in Sweden. We launched oils from six different countries and the response has been very, very positive. The sales of the oils have been good and are increasing. And I want to share quickly with you a, um, a video of the products that Ate has managed to put together, he has decided to you know, develop his own brand of products. And let me share this with you. Can't hear the video. All right. So that is just, you know, a, and let me actually, can you hear me well? Let me see. Can you hear me well? So this is, um, yeah, okay, thank you. And this is his brand. It's called Sawa. And Ate started less than 24 months ago. Now in the first six months, he was learning and building because really he um, was using one of the most complex importing models which is he decided to create his own brand and after 18 months the products were already in 12 shops in norway and after 24 months his sour products are now in 27 shops and i'm very happy to say actually ate is part of our program that i want to introduce to you later he is now not only a trainee but he has become one of our uh, mentors on the um, training program and he is now teaching others who are starting from scratch um, and he shares his lessons and we had you know a training session with him recently and the, the amount of knowledge he has gained you know in in these few months is absolutely amazing and that is the power um, you know, of doing this kind of training, because really we never come together as a community. And even when we are successful, everyone does his own thing. And I think there's so much value in learning from others. Uh, this is another success story. Um, Pamela from Uganda, she has been in this business for over 10 years. She has actually started on the entire supply chain um, and the entire value chain. So she's working right with the farmers in Uganda and she's importing her products into the European Union. And uh, Pamela has, has her African products in over 300 shops and outlets in uh, the world right now. Uh, these are one, some of her products, and I just want to show you, you know, what beautiful high-end products um, can be produced. And this would be sitting very beautifully in Western shelves. And this is just to, to give you some inspiration of what can be done. And I also want to share a story for those of you on the continent who are looking into intra-African trade, or maybe you're planning to you know, repatriate or relocate to Africa, and you're wondering what kind of business model you could be starting on the continent. Now, this particular story was a story that was shared with me by the uh, managing director of uh, Rwanda Mountain Tea Company. So I met him and he, he shared the story that one day uh, a Nigerian 
basically knocked at the door of the office and said, hi, I, you know, I traveled in from Nigeria and I would like to bring Rwandan tea into Nigeria. Now he took a few samples with him, you know, in his back, filled his back and flew back um, to Nigeria where then he was looking for buyers. And one of his first buyers he found was actually a, uh, you know, the little shops that you find at the total petrol station. And he had his products um, placed in the petrol station and um, it was very, very successful. And I'm not sure how these total petrol stations are set up. You know, is this a franchise or I'm sure um, everyone managed their own shop, but maybe there may be a, a, a larger distributor for all of the total uh, petrol station shops because there are over 500 of them in Nigeria. And now guess what? Once the shelves are empty, all he has to do is to reorder and uh, fill the shelves. And um, this is a very beautiful model, just generally the importing model, because the, the work is really in acquiring your first clients. But once they're happy, they are reordering. And that is the, the, the beauty of it, because it becomes very simple afterwards. And that's where um, it becomes really, really profitable without you needing to do a lot of work. Um, but again, I will dive into the, the, um, the different importing models in a little while. So um, what he also told me, the, um, the managing director was, they loved our tea, but they asked us to please get rid of the gorilla. Uh, so for some reason, you know what is one country's pride, maybe another one didn't like it so much. But here you go. Intra-African trade, the Africa Business Jump Starters, is actually growing at a much, much faster rate, about 40% as compared to 18 to 20% where Africa is uh, um, trading with the rest of the world. So intra-African trade is growing very fast. And there's a lot of opportunity for you, no matter where you are based, to start importing African goods into the world and as we've just heard, that includes the rest of Africa. Now, I want to explain to you also in what kind of sector you will be um, you know, operating in. It is so important that you understand the context. Yes, it's all good to choose a product and say, I want to make money with that product. But if you do not understand the larger industry and the sector, um, then you're kind of you know, wondering in which direction you're going. So let me explain to you the world of uh, African trade quickly. So first of all, I want you to understand that African governments are supporting exports, all right? So wherever you are based, this would be imports at your end because exports contribute directly to the economic growth of their respective countries. That is so important for you to understand because it means that exporting from Africa is a sustainable model, while importing, for example, from the US into Africa, that is a model that African governments are, um, you know, really uh, dis disencouraging from. They want to cut down on foreign imports that are flooding Africa. And therefore, they're actually making importing regulations into Africa uh, more expensive and uh, more difficult. And therefore, you want to look at a sustainable model, which is exporting out of Africa. So at your end, wherever in the base, uh, world you're based, it would be importing African goods. So that is how you contribute towards the economy of Africa. And Africa's food sector will be the next multi-billion dollar industry globally. We have the fast moving consumer goods sector. So these are food and drink items, you know, hygienic products. And the fast moving consumer goods sector plus the agricultural sector are set to be the main two sectors in uh, Africa that will be growing um, very, very fast. And guess what? When we're talking about trading uh, food items, then it touches on both of these fast growing sectors. 
Now, many products that Africa supplies are high in demand globally, and you can sell them. Why you should import from Africa? Well, again, you can build a passive income stream towards financial freedom. That is very much possible with one of the importing models that I will discuss a little bit further down in the training. Um, it can also be a serious side business, or it could be your main business for wealth creation. So, um, you know, it depends really on you. You can um, do this as a side hustle, or if you're saying, guess what, I'm looking for a, a real business that I can, can build and where I can, can leave a legacy for, for my community or my family, then importing from Africa allows you to do both. You can sell African products anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter where you're based. In Africa, the United States, Europe, or Asia, or um, on the Arab Peninsula, because um, these products are de in demand worldwide. And so that means that your business model also is pretty location independent. And of course, very, very relevant for us today is that you will be able to trade and sell even during a pandemic. Now, the new world of importing from Africa also um, you know, highlights that consumers globally are more into healthy and organic and ethically sourced natural products, unique products than ever before. And guess what? Africa has loads of it. Um, just the other day, someone asked, um, you know, what about the, uh, some of the products that are coming from India? You know, it was in, term, it was in uh, relation to Moringa powder, which is a, a superfoods. And uh, the, the, the person we were talking to, which was Ate, who is um, now trading that, said, you know, after his research, what he found out, and after speaking to people in the industry, he found out that a lot of um, the, the products that are produced in Asia um, or South America are actually mass produced. And very often, they do not have the quality anymore in terms of being you know organic ethically, ethically sourced natural um, or unique because they have been produced on a, a mass standard um, and that is where, where Africa still can come in you know um, you don't have to invest thousands to hold your own inventory and I will show you how and you can work out a partnership deal with African suppliers that see, suits you we will discuss agent status the broker status and the white labeling and distribution status. All right, so let me quickly check with you, dear Africa Business Jump Starters. Are you, are you understanding the context? Are you learning something new about why this is so relevant and why the, the right time is right now? Let's see if you're getting some value out of that um, to understand. Yeah. This is the yeah, right yeah, time yeah. and your success will also be depending on understanding the right time, okay? The timing is crucial for your success. And when you get in early and you're, you're among the first movers, that's what's powerful. You don't want to get in when everyone is already doing, I don't know, drop shipping and, you know, like the situation we have now with Alibaba and, 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 and China. That's when the market is crowded. You want to come in when, when things are, you know, about to rise and grow and you see there's something trending and you want to get into the start of that. That's what's powerful positioning. All right. And again, please don't unmute yourself. I'm going to take questions after this training. Okay. So let's continue. All right. So, and what we should also know is that more and more African suppliers offer actually branded products, okay? So we don't just want to uh, import bulk products that are not processed. We want to import also products that are processed in Africa so that value can be added on the continent, which means more jobs will be created on the continent and more of the money will be staying in Africa. That's also very important. All right, so let's continue. 
the world is looking for alternative supply chains let's get in so five myths to get out of your head and that is you need a lot of money to start an import export business nope that's not true you must travel to africa to find suppliers no that's not true either and i will show you how to get access to african suppliers reliable suppliers from the comfort of your home doing business africa african supplies is risky Again, I will show you today how to find professional, re reliable suppliers for your business. Or you may be thinking that you have to handle all of the shipping and inventory yourself. Again, we will be diving into business models that allow you to, um, you know, to just put the deals together. The African and diaspora and my friends will be my best customers. Nope they won't you know and i will tell you and show you how you can you know really get into business and make a lot of money by um, selling to mainstream markets so let's dive into five powerful and simple steps to importing from africa successfully step number one now take your notebooks and write it all down we have five steps okay and I'm going to give you a lot of insights today. So step number one is to find a great product that is high in demand in the West or wherever in the world you're ba based. So you want to be taking a demand driven approach. Don't ask what does Africa have that I could possibly, you know, export or import rather, but you want to ask which product is high in demand or trending in my specific target market and then can africa supply that so you need to look at your local market start with your own city wherever you're based um, and then you can go further with your own country wherever you're based right now and you need to understand which products are high in demand here which products are trending where maybe you know supply maybe supply issues or quality issues and then you choose the best product that you want to get started with so let's look at a few examples i want to show you also what a good product looks like so for example you may be thinking okay i could import wooden sculptures or i could import natural skincare now let's compare the two quickly with wooden culture a wooden sculpture, although, you know, the arts and African arts is, um, you know, really trending in Africa, uh, sorry, not trending in Africa, trending among art experts in the world, rather, um, you know, this, these are very, very distinct pieces of art. If we are looking, however, at the general wooden sculptures that you could get at any market in Africa, as compared to natural skincare. Now, look, the wooden cultures it is very, very difficult to get that with a big order. Usually you would be selling, you know, uh, single pieces of the sculpture. And then also you will have a very limited amount of people in the country where you're based that would actually be interested in purchasing them. And that's why you um, will find it much more difficult to make profits with that kind of product as compared to the natural skincare, for example. Now, this is also a product coming out of Africa, of Ghana, uh, this particular one here. And when, it, when we look at natural skincare, well, first of all, you can really sell in large quantities. You could be selling this to the wellness industry or to retail, to supermarkets, um, or you could um, be selling this to just mainstream people, even online. So where you have a large number of potential clients and that's where it gets powerful, all right? Uh, dear Leila, please don't um, unmute yourself, okay? Now, waste beads versus coffee. Again, you have a product on the left, the waste beads, that first of all have a tiny profit margin. But again, also, it will be difficult to really sell waste beads in bulk. Um, and the other thing now is they're not pandemic proof. So, you know, um, people will stop buying them when a pandemic hits. 
Whereas on the contrary, you have coffee. First of all, um, you can sell this in large quantities, again, to coffee shops, to hotels, to retailers. Second, it's mainstream. And third, it will sell even when a pandemic hits. Let's look at traditional versus mainstream. So on the left, you know, we have a beautiful sister in a, uh, a, a traditional clothes. And now this traditional clothes, um, here this image is from Ethiopia. And this would be mainly bought by the Ethiopian community. Now, of course, if you live in a city, um, you know, or in, in, in a region where you have a large diaspora um, community of Ethiopians, then you may be able to do good business with it. I, I'm not saying that this is not possible. However, if you do not have access to that community or you live in a, in a smaller kind of town or you live in, in a country where you actually do not have a large community of diasporans, then again, it will be difficult to sell as compared to the product on the right, which are mainstream shoes that would be, um, you know, there are um, leather shoes also coming out of Ethiopia, but it's also made in Ethiopia, but they're not just selling to Ethiopian diasporans, but they would be shoes that you can sell to anyone. And therefore, um, I believe there is more potential for everyone um, on the mainstream product as compared to the tradi traditional. Now, let's look at clothes versus food. Yes, there is huge demand and a growing demand for, you know, African um, print in the world. We can even see that the fashion industry is moving towards African print. But again, I want to make you aware of the differences. Now, when it comes to importing uh, clothes, for example, African, uh, made in Africa and in African inspired clothing, one of the issues will, that you will have is that clothes come in different sizes, all right? So let's say you start selling them possibly online. Now, you will have issues with it is too small, it is too large, it doesn't fit, you know, it's not the color I wanted. Um, and so people, uh, clients will get back to you because the size or the, you know, doesn't fit or the color is not the color they wanted. And what you will find is that uh, you will have a lot of items returned to you. While on the contrary, you have, you know, a food product here, we have, for example, a hibiscus herbal tea. And um, when you send that out, well, the chances that someone will return it to you are very, very small. Let's look at flowers versus additives, for example. Now, um, East Africa in particular is a main exporter of flour, especially Kenya and Ethiopia. Well, yes, it has been good business for a lot of people. And to be honest, the, Ken the, the, the flour industry is actually in the hands of some, some Europeans, uh, especially the Dutch. But right now, what we can see is that because the pandemic hit, the trade and the retail of flowers went down by 40%. And that means, you know, a lot of these uh, commercial farms are, um, are, you know, negatively impacted upon and the businesses are, you know, impacted upon. Where on the contrary, we have additives. You see here gum arabica. Now the gum arabica comes from the acacia trees and that is an additive that is being used both in pharmaceuticals and in the food industry. And guess what? Both industries, the pharmaceutical and the food industry are continuing to flourish and grow even during a pandemic. So African products that are high in demand that I suggest you start importing and trading are coffee, tea, fruits, natural skincare products, superfoods, gluten-free flours and grains, food on pharma additives such as gum arabic or uh, bee wax, and trending but not mainstream or not pandemic tr uh, proof are African arts, 
basket, bags, and apparel. So the reason why I share this is because it is so important that we self-educate, that we do not make emotional decisions. Oh, we love, you know, a certain product and we just start to do business with it or we start trading without really understanding, you know, how prone is this product to risk? Um, how much demand is there in the, in the mainstream market? Will I hit quick, quickly hit my ceilings or is this a product that I can really grow and expand fast? Now, bad products for you and for startups, therefore, are, first of all, large and heavy products. Let's say you wanted to import and trade African-inspired furniture. This is, I would say, these kind of products are, you know, leave these to, to people who, who already are trading and they know what they're doing and they have a, a client base. Because large and heavy products are very difficult to ship and um, it is complicated. You also possibly want to avoid in the beginning, uh, one size does not fit at all, you know? So clothing, shoes, for example, especially if you decide to sell online. You also want to be avoiding fast perishable foods, um, especially when you're starting for the first time and you want to become a distributor yourself. So when you become a distributor and you have your own warehouse and then you choose to trade um, fruits, for example. Well, guess what? Fruits are fast perishable. And that means, you know, your risk will increase, your risk for losses will increase because they have a very small shelf life. You also want to avoid products that have tiny profit margins, such as one waste beads, for example. Um, you know, your profit margins are so tiny. Uh, and on top of it, you may not be able to sell this to the mainstream market. And you want, um, uh, you want to not be selling uh, products that are only, um, you know, valued by your African friends and not by foreign companies. So what makes a great product? Well, demand globally is high and you have a consistent stream of buyers throughout the year. It can be sold in large quantities to companies. That's what you want, uh, what you uh, need to be looking for. And sm small, light and simple to ship. So products with a small, uh, a long shelf life. Okay, and please don't unmute yourself. Okay. Let me see. Sam, can you mute yourself? Okay, fantastic. And you want to be looking for products with a good profit margin and a product that is pandemic proof. Now, this was the step number one, okay? Remember, I hope you have your notebook. Step number one was to choose your ideal product. Now, step number two now is to choose your importing model strategically. Okay. And so number two is choose your importing model. Which importing model are you choosing? When you start an importing business selling African products, you first choose the business model that is right for you. Let me list the main ones for you. Number one, you become an agent that is commission based. Number two, you, you become a wholesaler or a distributor. Number three, you start your own branded product. All right. So these are the three main business models. Let's have a closer look so you can understand them better. Number one, you become an agent. This is a business model that you can start on a shoestring budget. When you become an importing agent, you do not need to handle the goods or the transactions, so the money transaction yourself, and you do not have a warehouse. You're simply connecting the buyer with the seller in Africa. And that means that you can create a passive income stream over time and that you're completely location independent. You really just need your laptop or your phone and you can get this importing business model started anywhere in the world, all right? 
Now, number two is that you become a distributor or a wholesaler. And that means that you can get larger profit margins and larger income, but now you have to ship your own goods and you have to actually put them into a warehouse. Now, it makes you an active player in the industry, which is really of value because you really create a business in, 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 your own, in its own right. Uh, and you also have more control over your business and prices. So these are some of the pros. Um, you can actually add your price, you know, um, yourself and your profit margins. So you're not that dictated now by the supplier who tells you what the price is. You purchase the products from Africa. You put it into a warehouse. You can start with your living room or your own garage. And then you sell these products on at your own price. It gives you more control, but now it also means you need to put in more money um, because you actually need to purchase the products first yourself, okay? So it's a larger investment that you have to make in the beginning. Now you can see here, uh, one of our importers, Honora, who actually started you know, um, with, with nothing. This is before I had this importing program. And he was one of my clients in the Africa Business Academy. And he started to import the gluten-free cassava flour from Rwanda. And look, this is his warehouse. Um, he actually managed to, you know, um, leave his job. And this is his warehouse with his products. But he didn't start like that. He started with a small quantity um, of, uh, of goods. And later he made his first shipment with a container. Number three, the third business model is that you start your own branded product. Okay. So that is where you actually import the, um, the, the, the bulk ingredients and then you have it packaged and branded yourself. And if your name is Mary, you could call it, I don't know, Mary's coffee. Okay. You get the point. So here you own the product. That means you have full control over all aspects, including the branding, the pricing, and who you would like to target. You get increased prestige and enhanced vision. You can leave a legacy owning your own brand. And you can make additional income as you now control the margins and others can actually become your importing agents or your resellers. All right. So these are the three importing models that I wanted to introduce to you today. Now start with the model that makes the most sense to you at the beginning. Keep the pros and cons in mind because you can always upgrade to a more complex importing business model later on. So let's say right now you are operating on a shoestring budget and you would love to have your own brand, your own skincare brand, your own coffee brand, but you do not have the money to purchase the good, to put them in goods, to put them in a warehouse, to you know, buy the packaging. You could start with an imp import agent model. Uh, where you simply connect the, uh, the buyers with the suppliers in Africa, that will allow you to really get to understand the products and the industry um, and who is buying. And you can always upgrade later on, so to speak, to a distributor or to someone who wants to um, create their own brand. Or you can also just stay and remain as an import agent if you really do not want to handle any goods at all, and you can just get a commission and create a portfolio of buyers, you know, because once you have acquired one buyer, as I said, he will order again and again and again when the shelves are empty. And once you have a portfolio of buyers, that's when you can create real passive income as an import uh, agent. So you've chosen your business model, great. Now you have to implement success step number three. So step number one was to choose the right product. Number two was then to choose the right importing model for you. And step number three is to find a reliable African supplier that you can trust. Yeah. Dealing with the wrong suppliers in Africa is the biggest risk in your business. It will cost you a lot of money and loss of credibility among your clients 
if you get this wrong. Hence, finding reliable and professional suppliers in Africa is one of the most important aspects when building your import business. Now let's quickly look at finding suppliers in China versus finding them in Africa. Now when trading with China, you can go to sites such as, you know, Alibaba and AliExpress, uh, you know, you check on a huge range of suppliers, you get client reviews, you get supplier details, you get stars, you can, you know, you can make the transaction online. It is all set up. There is a huge infrastructure. And when trading with China, you're looking also at one homogeneous market. In Africa, however, you're looking actually at 54 markets to import from. So that is also a distinct difference you have to understand. We're saying China versus Africa, but we are really talking one country versus 54 different countries. And all of these 54 countries, you know, they, they, they have they have different products, but they also have um, a different environment in terms of the, the regulations or the, the business environment. Some of these countries, you know, it's very, very easy to import from or to trade with um, because they have a good business environment. And then other African countries have a very, very difficult and risky um, business environment. And, and that is something to, to understand. Now, of course, the situation in China hasn't been always like that, you know, and if you're looking back maybe 15, 20 years ago, um, when all these uh, online sites and drop shipping and Alibaba, you know, when all of that started, really, um, people also worried about doing business with China and being scammed. And a lot of them actually were flying to China to make sure that whichever company they found out, found online was an actual company and it wasn't a scam. So things were not easy in China either. And that's where Africa is right now. You know, we do have uh, uh, the producers, the suppliers, manufacturers, we have amazing brands, but it is difficult to find reliable and professional ones. And um, it is not possible to just go online and uh, get, you know, the likes of Alibaba when it comes to African products. In fact, Alibaba is looking now towards Africa, trying to import this or a lot of lot of uh, suppliers on Ali, Alibaba, I should say, um, are looking towards Africa. They are importing a lot of the goods into China and then reselling that uh, those goods to the rest of the world. Hence, in Africa, you need to find other ways to find reliable suppliers. So how do you do that? How do I find reliable suppliers in Africa? Well, there are several ways to do so, but I will show you the three best and fastest ways, and I highly recommend them. Number one is that you go that you go through professional African entities, such as the Expert Promotion Council, the industry associations and the chambers, such as the uh, chambers of commerce. OK, so here you can see the logos of a few of them. You have the um, the uh, the import, sorry, no, the Export Promotion Council of, of Kenya. You have Zambia, the Association of Manufacturers. You have the National Agricultural Export the, uh, Board of, uh, of um, Rwanda. And you have, for example, Ghana Cocoa Board. So what you can do is when you visit in Africa, or you could also reach out by email, you could um, contact these professional associations, chambers and entities, because guess what? A lot of the producers in Africa are members under these associations. And that means that when you get a referral to a supplier, to a manufacturer, through one of these entities, you can be sure that you get referred to a professional and a reliable supplier. Okay, this is really one of the best ways for you. And when you are in Africa on the ground, especially those of you um, who are, you know, visiting or doing their research, um, let me tell you this, 
you can always go to these associations and these chambers and knock doors. Let them know that you're there for a few days that you're visiting and that you would like to get some recommendations or uh, some good contacts and they will always welcome you. Um, don't, don't really um, bother to set up an appointment with them by email. You can simply knock doors and let them know that you're there for a few days and uh, you will be helped. Number two, um, the other best way to find reliable professional suppliers in Africa is through face-to-face -face meetings at industry events, such as African expos and conferences. Okay, so I know that during the pandemic, of course, a lot of these conferences and expos are being postponed, but generally speaking, again, they're one of your best way to find these reliable and professional uh, suppliers in Africa, and these expos and conferences are happening throughout the world in regards to Africa. So you will get them on the continent, you will get them in the West, you know, in, in Asia, in, in Arab countries, and even um, you know, if you just go to a general food food exhibition, one of the main ones in the world, um, they are very well known, or a very well known organic exhibition. Very often, you have uh, Africans uh, and suppliers traveling to these conferences because guess what? They are looking for buyers. That is one of the main challenge they have. They 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 are looking for these buyers, and that's where you come in. Dear Africa Business Jump Starters, because you are sitting in markets across the world and you can open up these markets to these suppliers. Okay, so that is a, a perfect way to also get introduced to really uh, reliable suppliers. And number three is through in depth research. Um, so that means that you just go online, you look for certain products. Um, and then you check if a company, you know, is really trustworthy. And you can check that, um, for example, maybe they're members at one of the associations that I mentioned before, or um, you, you see that this company is being mentioned in the local newspaper. And a lot of these local newspapers, African local and national newspapers, you can find these newspapers online as well. So that is all part of your research to make sure um, you are dealing with um, reliable suppliers. All right, so, and now there's even a better way cutting down time and risk in Africa, okay? Um, there's a better way. You can access reliable African suppliers with quality products from the comfort of your home or office and just start importing wherever in the world you are. How? Well, this will be the big reveal at the end of my session. And if you know the big reveal because you've been in my um, training before, then please do not share it with everyone who is new because guess what? Life can be so boring. And we all like a little bit of curiosity, don't we? Let me know. Let's check with you. Let's check with you, um, dear Africa Business Jump Starters. Can you hear me well? Can you hear me well? Are you still yes. up? Are you focusing? Yes. Are you learning? Yes. Are you taking yes. notes? Yes. 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 I, I love the white. I love the white. Okay. I'm going to meet everyone again. Yes. I, I forgot to say, please use the chat room box and put it, <laughs> but I love it. You're so enthusiastic that you just unmuted yourself and shouted it all in. Thank you so much. Okay, so the big ring will, will come in a um, in a few minutes um, because we've, uh, we've created another way to do it. And I love putting some curiosity out here. You know, as I said, uh, life can be dull. So let's see what's coming up, the big reveal. And for those of you on YouTube, I know you're, you're joining, you're listening, you know, um, thank you so much for joining and let's continue the training. All right, let's continue the training. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna share this with you shortly.
But here's what can happen fast if you think you've understood, but then you get carried away by the opportunity. And how often have we seen that, that you get in touch with someone, you meet someone, you think, oh, wow, this is a great deal. And that is what I call um, emotional decision making. You know, you say, great, sounds good. I met this person. They look really, really nice. We had a great chat with each other. And this is what happened with one of my clients. Now, here's the thing. Um, my client, um, you know, went through the training and she's actually my client because she's, um, she, she was not just listening from afar uh, like you did. Uh, she became a client and then she traveled to her home country, Senegal. Now in Senegal, she met a lady who then suggested that, you know, the, the, there was a lot of mango sitting somewhere that could not be shifted and could not be brought to the market. And um, they had it, had put it together from a lot of farmers and she could make her a good deal. Now the client of mine, she was based in the Netherlands and she had uh, actually good connections there. And she said, fantastic. You know, maybe she knew someone with a supermarket. I'm not sure, but she said she had a buyer and she said, fantastic. That is an amazing deal. You know, I can make a, a quick trade deal here, make money and maybe help these farmers as well. And guess what? She jumped on, on that wagon and my client lost 4,000 US dollars. Now I wanna quickly go back to this picture because here's something very, very important. When I look at these um, ladies, maybe farmers or small traders um, who are really trying to sell a few fruits to make ends meet, you know, um, that is why we're here. And that is why I said I'm dedicating this training session to the many farmers and herders and even the small traders um, that are bringing this produce to local markets. Um, but here's the thing. Very often when they come across you, someone from the West, maybe someone in business, maybe, you know, um, uh, and you're promising something or you're all excited. Guess what? they're seeing an opportunity in you. That's it. Maybe they have school fees to pay. Maybe they have a hospital bill to pay. Maybe they need to bring food home, you know, or just generally they're thinking, okay, this is a great business de deal. And they're promising something they can then not fulfill. So, I, I want to make this point because it is not so much in my belief. Anyway, this is what I believe. And by the way, I've worked with farmers and herders in Africa since 1999. If, if some of you are wondering what my PhD is in, my PhD is in food security in the greater Horn of Africa. I've done my master's with on farming and land degradation and my PhD on, on food security. I've worked with rural communities my entire life, all right? My entire adult life, I should say. And, and so what I wanna say is these communities are close to my heart. I've studied what I've studied in order to uplift the poor farmers and herders and women also. I have a very soft, you know, spot for, for women and their struggles in Africa. And that is why I do what I do. However, in order for everyone to win and succeed, and when we go into business, it is very important that we do business the right way and we do it in a way where everyone wins, all right? And where we do not lose our investment or our money because we've made emotional decisions or we've made in informed, uninformed decisions, all right? So it's very important that we remain professional and that we go the right avenues because remember the story that I shared at the beginning of this session and that was from the elderly cassava farmer in Rwanda who said his whole life he was 
planting on two hectares or owning two hectares of land with his cassava. And now there was the factory manufacturing, buying his cassava. And he managed to go from two hectares his whole life to 40 he hectares in six years. And you're the one who's bringing, uh, you know, the, 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 the imports, the goods in. But you shouldn't be buying from the farmer directly. He doesn't have the quality or the quantity or the infrastructure to, you know, to really fulfill the standards that you have to have in order to be a respected business person in the West. Okay. But you're still impacting in, in I wouldn't say indirectly, I would say actually direct terms on the livelihoods of, of, of these farmers, especially once you're trading uh, ethically traded and, uh, and uh, uh, fair trade goods and so on. All right. So this is very important for us to understand because, um, you know, I think all of us, we want to succeed. We want to see Africa su succeed and we want to uplift our continent and the communities. All right. So step number four, dear Africa business jam status, step number four, and this is wonderful. We have almost like 400 people live in the Zoom room, you know, several hundred more live joining on YouTube. Fantastic. Um, I, I, I love that we come together and that we, um, you know, work together towards uh, uplifting ourselves and the continent of Africa. So step number four then is to sell the right, no, to sell to the right buyers for maximum profits. Okay. So to sell for the, to the right buyers. Uh, yeah. Well, you may be saying I sell to my African friends. Okay. And I hear you because they are probably appreciating your African products more than anyone else. But guess what? Your African friends are not your best buyers they may be your best you know um testers can you say testers those who are testing your products all right so when i say african african diaspora african american you know everyone we're one family so do not you know aim to sell towards them uh, as such uh, unless um you know there is uh, of course they may be a big part of your of your broader sales strategy, absolutely. But what I want you to do is to not think small, all right? So they're the amazing people to test your products and maybe there's a larger community out there that you can start selling to, absolutely. But look what is happening in the meanwhile. Dear Africa Business Jump Starters, this is Hanjin Africa and you can see some agent script on it. What I want to let you know is that while we as the African diaspora by and large, and those on the continent by and large, and friends of Africa, because Africa has many friends and I know many of you are joining us here, while we are thinking small, maybe selling to friends or our community, our small community, look, what other businesses and companies are doing. They are getting entire shiploads out of the continent. And therefore I want to really make sure that I, I want to steer your soul in regards to let's rethink, let's position ourselves as, as real traders, as real, as real brands who can actually start shipping out one container, two container, and at one point, maybe a small shipload. Okay. So the reason why I share this here, and, you know, I, I apologize if I maybe offended every, anyone by saying, don't, don't sell to your African friends. This is actually, you know, sometimes you need to um, say it a little bit in, in a kind of upfront terms. So it hits home. What I want to say is let's not play it small. Let's start thinking big. That is the point I want to make. So we said, um, you know, do not sell to your African friends, um, sell to larger companies, sell primarily to clients who can actually make large orders. That's the point here. 
And let's quickly look at selling to companies versus selling to individuals. Let's have a look how this um, would turn out in financial terms. So let's look at the math. Let's say you are um, selling on Amazon and you know, you're getting orders one by one by individuals. Now, if you are selling to 1,000 individuals at a profit margin of $2 per unit, you make 2,000, okay? So let's say you're selling coffee and you're selling one kg, kilogram of coffee, and you're selling this on Amazon to 1,000 individuals at a profit margin of $2, you are making $2,000, okay? Now, here's the other thing. Let's say you are selling to companies instead. Now, one company makes an order of 5,000 units at a profit margin of just $1, okay? Because it may be ordering 5,000 kg of coffee. And that is not a lot for a supermarket or for a coffee store. And your profit margin is just $1. You now make $5,000 with a single client who will come back for more and for another larger order. Can you see the difference? Now, but there's another difference. And that is that let's say you are selling to 1,000 individuals on Amazon. Well, first of all, get 1,000 individuals who buy from you. That is not easy. To get 1,000 people to buy from you is not easy. You still have to go through the same process of you know, getting your goods, um, you know, understanding your industry, understanding the goods, understanding your marketing, your sales, you need to, you know, you cannot just put a product on Amazon and it will sell on its own. You have to go through the process of marketing, of selling, just the same as you would need to do to, to win companies over to buy from you. But now let's say you actually managed to get 1000 individuals. Guess what? they will come back to you say, oh, I didn't get my coffee. Oh, it was lost in order. Or I want another one. Or, you know, they will come with inquiries. You now have 1,000 clients. You need to create customer service for 1,000 clients. You also need to make sure that you put a sticker on whatever you're sending out 1,000 times. Then it will get lost in post. It will return in post. You have suddenly an entire logistics center that you need to put up um, on top of that um, as compared to selling to companies where you are just dealing with one single client and their request. All right. So you're making more money and you have less hassle. That is the model that I'm uh, really, really um, uh, suggesting you take on if you want to um, put, you know, um, build up profits fast and also in order to create a, a passive income stream where you, um, as an importing agent, for example, you connect these larger companies with suppliers in Africa. All right. Having said that, I want to add something. You can, of course, still sell online. All right. But I would not make that your primary business model, but I've spoken to some of our importers and some of our mentors. And interestingly, they also said, especially those that were starting small, they were saying, you know, during the pandemic, having the online shop was actually good um, as, as well. It kind of gave them a, uh, another injection of income. All right. So what we're doing here is we're just looking at different scenarios so we can understand the pros and cons. So companies to sell to in the West, for example, shops, supermarkets, retailers, restaurants, coffee shops, hotels, wholesalers and larger importers. So, so importers that are already well established in your city or your, your country, and you can still sell to other importers as well. Um, corporate offices, spas and saloons and other businesses. All right, offices, oh, we have that already, corporate offices. So, so uh, this is a list of companies to sell to, and you can see it's quite a large list. Now, this, the, the rule here is that you sell to clients uh, what they want, okay? That is very important to understand. So um, 
you cannot just simply go to any hotel or to any supermarket and say, hey, I've got coffee, are you interested? Or, hey, I've got um, Moringa oil, are you interested? It is very important that you understand what do clients want and how does your product fit that? So let me make uh, another um, uh, example here. So you can come up, for example, let's say you have high-end coffee, all right? And now you want to get the, the high-end coffee into the market somewhere, uh, you know, in, in Europe or the US or wherever you're based. Now, the high-end coffee um, is being traded globally um, at, you know, it's a premium coffee, so it's going to be a higher at a higher cost. Now, there are companies who would want the premium coffee and then there are companies who couldn't care less so on the left hand side for example you have a hotel and this is the mcdonald's hotel chain is a high-end hotel chain in the uk and they actually bought premium coffee from rwanda guess what they want the premium coffee because they have premium clients or let's say you're taking a fair trade coffee from tanzania um, to a coffee shop, all right? Again, as you can see, this particular coffee shop here says fair trade coffee house. So would they want your higher priced fair trade coffee? Absolutely. On the, on the other side, if you're going to a bed and breakfast or some kind of breakfast um, coffee shop that just serves to, you know, the, the, lower, the lower end of consumers, they would not want to, to buy at a higher or a premium price. And so it's very important that you understand how does my product fit whatever the, 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 the client is standing for, all right? Um, you also need to look out for buyer trends and then go for it. You need to understand the market. You cannot blindly just go and start selling. That doesn't work. You need to understand your product and you need to understand what the market wants. So this is a, you know, just an example that I came across um, look, checking online. So here's Nando's, for example, and most of you will, will know the chain. And at that time, when I researched it, this is a, is a while ago, but guess what? They had an Africa theme going on for, for a while. So look, they had um, all their furniture is African, so it's African inspired furniture in, in the back. You may not see it. These are actually images of you know, children and communities in Africa. So now you had this theme going on. Now, now guess what? When you approach Nando's, with your coffee or your fruits or uh, or your tea or whatever you will need to approach them with that context that is relevant to them and relevant to them is they have an african theme going on so it would be very good for them you know or it would make sense to also offer an african coffee that gives back to african farmers all right so um, but that's why it is so important that before you actually contact a potential buyer, you check what they're about. And you can check that on the website. You have um, a mission statement. You have campaigns. You have corporate responsibility. You have um, their goals and their vision, as a, be it as a hotel chain or a beauty spa or a retailer or a restaurant. And you need to actually understand that first before you reach out and communicate to them. Otherwise, you're just shooting into the blue and hoping that someone will buy. And guess what? Hope business never works out for you. All right. So check what the company wants, what they stand for, and then use their wording in the communication. So the wording that you've seen on their website, what, what is important to them, use that to sell your product. So, for example, this is a, um, um, a discounter we have in our area. Um, I'm based in oh. Germany, for those of you who wonder, um, at the moment still. Um, and we have, we have both. So, for example, in my neighborhood, we have a very high-end uh, um, retailer, supermarket, and we have a discounter. We have those two. And um, the high-end retailer 
is doing everything like or, or organic, um, you know, ethically sourced, fair trade. I mean, I've looked the last time at, at eggs. Oh my God, it's amazing what kind of different eggs are. One said, for example, we are employing disabled people. That was printed on the, on the package for the eggs. We are employing disabled people. And then another one was saying, um, we are not, we are not killing the the little male ch chick chickens you know the i i had no idea that this was actually happening but in in poultry production um it's happening that the the, the little male chicklets are getting um killed um and so they were they were advertising that they're not doing it so first of all you know this is the kind of consumer trends that are happening in the west by the way People want, people want ethical products more and more, and they're happy to pay more for them. Guess which eggs, by the way, I haven't been um, buying the mass produced eggs for many years, but then there's free range. And then there is, you know, then there is the chickens that can really run around free. That's another level. And now guess this, guess what? There's on top of that organic and we're not killing the little chicklets and, and so on. But that also, shows the trends in the consumer market. And you need to understand these trends in order to sell properly what your product is standing for. Now, the reason why I shared it is if you are now approaching that retailer, you can see in the shelves what's in the shelves. I've just shared it with you. Now, let's say you're approaching that retailer. You know what is important for that retailer. So I actually went to an expo um, with my Kenyan tea um, and I also had some cassava flour imported. And so I was, uh, you know, trying to sell these two products, gluten-free cassava flour and um, the, the tea. And I said to myself, all right, so let me just sacrifice an hour per day. Let me try to do this. I'm not an importer. So I'm starting from scratch, like everyone, one hour per day. So what I started doing is I was looking at retailers, supermarkets I knew, you know, bakeries because gluten-free uh, gluten flours, and I was putting everything on my Excel sheet. This is why you can see an Excel sheet. I was putting um, them on my Excel sheet. Then I was putting the main contact and, you know, um, the the website, the website address where I have the mission, mission and the goals. So I'm reading about the company because before I contact them. I spent an hour per day. I reached out first by email, uh, sorry, excuse me, first by phone call asking who the right person is in the purchasing department. Okay, I want to get the products into the shelves. Who is the person to speak to? Who is the person to email to? And uh, they would give me the direct contact, the direct name. I was, would then use the name and the contact to, um, to reach out to them. One hour per day, five days a week, so Monday to Friday. On day 13, the Africa Business Jump Starters, I received my first interest, expression of interest. On day 15, I received the second expression of interest. Both were, were for the cassava flour, by the way, the gluten-free cassava flour. The first was for a bakery. The second one was for, from one of the, the, top, real, uh, uh, the top retail uh, supermarket chains here in Germany. Rewe, okay, it's, it's, it's huge. And guess what? 13 days and 15 days, and I received an expression of interest for a sample. I will stop here because I'm actually going into the real training for, 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 for our trainees. There's only so much I can do. So we have limited, uh, you know, limited time here today. But what I want to show you, it is so possible and achievable. And it doesn't need to take you months. It took me 13 days and 15 days to get the first expression of interest for a sample. And uh, not from a corner shop, but from a big family bakery and one of the main retailers here in Germany. Okay, so I want to let you know it can be done. It's very tangi tangible, but don't forget, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a proper business, 
proper business that you can set up and that will feed you and your family and Africa. That's what we're looking for, okay? So step number five, and this is the last step. Step number five then is to scale smartly and make a lot of money. Focus on getting more of the right larger buyers, foster good relationships with your suppliers and your buyers and build a buyer portfolio of buyer accounts so they reorder again and again. That will allow for passive income stream. Diversify your product range with a closely related, within a closely related industry. Um, that will allow for faster sales as you have existing buyers. So let's say if you have started with coffee, um, do not jump from coffee to, to oil. This is a different industry. You need to start from scratch again. If you started with coffee and you want to add another product, add tea. That is then both beverages, all right? And you may be able to sell to the existing buyers already. Okay, so let's quickly recap. And as you can see, guys, I love teaching. I, I love empowering you. You know, I, I have to stop myself to, to, to say, okay, you know, time, time. Um, okay, let's get moving. Let's recap. We said today that you can build a passive income stream and wealth, that you can make the money you need to build the life of your dreams, and you can be highly flexible and your own boss. African governments support exports, so goods out of Africa, as it contributes directly to the economy and the growth of their respective countries. You will help Africa economically and build a new narrative. Importing from Africa is easier than ever. And everyone can do it. And I see I've misspelled everyone. It's the perfect business model for the African diaspora as buyers are sitting, you know, wherever you are, but it works equally well for intra-African trade and global trade, no matter where in the world you are. You can get started with little money. We've seen this for the, uh, for the uh, import agent status. The world is looking for high quality, organic, ethically sourced products, and Africa has a lot of that. And it's a business model that is COVID-19 proof as the trade of food and skincare will continue no matter what. Step number one, we said, start with the demand. Find your ideal product that is high in demand wherever you're based. Step number two, choose your importing business model strategically. Step number three, find a reliable African supplier you can trust. Step number four is to sell to the right buyers for maximum profits. And step number five, and we said that was especially companies. And step number five then is to scale smartly and make a lot of money by putting together buyer portfolios. But there's one more reason why you should start an African import business. One more reason. And I wanna quickly, you know, I thought about, shall I put this in? But I think it's important. And I wanted to include this. One more reason. And that's that. This is the leading magazine called Food Business Africa, all right? So this company deals with the food industry in Africa. Now, please let me, let me know, dear Africa Business Jump Starters, what is it that you see and notice and what is it that you do not see? Let me see in the comment section, please. Let me see in the comment section. Um, not a single black face. All right. All right, okay, yeah, let me go now in the comment section, please. Exactly, not a single black face. Uh, mute everyone. All right, so yes, no African, no black people, no black faces. Where are the Africans? No Africans, no women. Oh, great, I love that. Let's continue. And here's an important point that I wanna make. And that is, first of all, it is time for us to get in. The point I want to make here is what we need to understand is, first of all, I do not teach by exclusion. I teach to empower our own. That's number one. That goes hand in hand with the fact that we're in a global economy and a global market. 
And guess what? If we want African, uh, you know, uh, um, African economies to open up and we're in a global open market, um, open market economy means that people can come in. What we see, however, is who is coming in and who is not getting in. So the point I want to make here is not by exclusion. The point I want to make here is to ourselves as Africans and the African diaspora. Where are we? And where are we means where is each one of us not standing by the sidelines, complaining or saying, you know, you know, everyone else took took over. We have to empower ourselves. We have to collectively understand that there is huge potential in Africa that is being taken, you know, by a lot of other people. And we need to play a role in this. That is, that is what I believe. It is up to us to actually make a step and play our role. Be it as Africans and dear sisters, be it as women. All right. So <clears throat> the reason why I, um, I brought this up is because I, I truly believe that starting an African business and even the importing model that we've discussed today goes beyond, far beyond just making money. We also talked about supporting farmers, right? But right now, we also talk about playing our role in the new narrative. We do not want the new narrative to be directed by foreigners. Foreigner will come in in an open marketplace. And unfortunately, we also have a lot of African governments that believe some countries, especially China, you know, are going to, um, to uh, save the continent. Well, I don't want to go into a much, in much discussion with that, but we are seeing almost like neocolonialism hap happening uh, on the continent of Africa. But it is not okay for us to sit just on the sidelines and complain. We actually have to walk the talk. That's what I believe. We have to walk the talk, even in small steps. It's important that we do this. And, um, you know, that's also the spirit of, of today's, um, today's training. So I'm not sure why you showed up today. It may be because you're tired of the rat race or COVID-19 has someone sh somehow shook up your reality and you want to start your own business and, and leading that on your own terms. Maybe you were looking for a meaningful and profitable African business that you could manage from anywhere in the world. Maybe you're ready to create the lifestyle you crave with the potential to create passive wealth, have freedom and flexibility. Or maybe you have a new import export business already and you're looking, looking to import from Africa in a more effective manner. I had one of our trainees who was importing successfully He's African as well, drop shipping from China. And he said, you know what, Dr. Hearns, after all these years, I'm making money, but I, there's no meaning to my business. I want to help my own people in my, com uh, my continent. And, and therefore he decided to start um, doing business or importing from Africa. But whatever your situation is right now, and I know that for many of us, the situation right now could be very challenging if you change nothing, nothing will change. That's it. And that is true for our own lives. And it is true for our continent of Africa. Our continent is rising, but we all know that there are so many, you know, things that are wrong still in Africa, from poverty to extreme injustice. And we need to make sure that we step in. So what I wanted, would, what I would like to do uh, now is to actually, we've come to an end of the training, but what I would like to do is to, um, you know, first of all, share the big reveal. Remember the big reveal where I said there is a easier way to find um, reliable suppliers in Africa now from the comfort of your home. And I also want to share with you our pioneering program on how to import from Africa. As you know, I'm a trainer. I've put a program together 
There are several hundreds of trainees already, and I would love to share this with you. So let me um, hear from you if, if you are fine to sit a little bit in longer until we have our Q&A. Um, let me see, am I allowed to share with you our new pioneering training on how to import from Africa the right way? It's a pioneering program that I've put together and yes, please, sure, please, yes, share, yes, please. And can I get the link? Okay, please do, yes, yes, yes. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, of course, Dr. Harnett, thank you so much. All right, so let's share this and then we move on to Q&A. All right. Okay, and hold on. And I'm gonna mute everyone. Don't unmute yourself, please, thank you. All right, so a very warm welcome to our Importing from Africa program. This is the first ever comprehensive online program on how to import from Africa, plus the big reveal that I have promised. So here's what you will get. First of all, you will get access to the world's first ever online training on how to import from Africa you will get access to an online training with 12 modules that will explain in detail um, how to get started. So for example, you know, how to find reliable African supplies, we touched on that, and uh, how to understand your profit margins, how to get your product samples, how to get them shipped, are you get, getting them by plane or by by air or by ship, uh, how do you sell to the right clients? What do you say and, and how do you find them? You know, uh, duty, taxes, and all that. So um, we have 12 modules and guess what? There's no online training anywhere in the world um, that is teaching that. There's a few trainings on how to import and trade. Um, most of them are on China and some of them are, you know, on the U in, in regards to the United States or just global trade. But there's no online training or program that really teaches you how to do so the right way in the context of Africa. Now, number two, the big re reveal, here it is. Number two, you will get access to our exclusive online platform of reliable African suppliers. Yes, dear Africa Business Jump Starters, we have put in the word, uh, the, the, the work and the word. Um, we're pioneering something. We have put together a marketplace where we are featuring reliable professional African suppliers and their products. Okay. And that means you can just go onto the marketplace, click a few buttons on your computer, and you can contact them through our marketplace. And we have vetted them, okay? So this is um, the access number two that I've just said, the product finder. And you can do so from the con comfort of your home. And when I talk about African suppliers, I am talking about some of the best on the continent. In our marketplace, we have some of the largest producers. Um, we have, you know, many of them I have visited personally. Some of the pictures are actually personal pictures I took. Um, you know, we can see, um, actually, I don't need to, to go into detail now because I'm aware of time. But as you can see, we're talking about professional manufacturers who are adding uh, value to the products and then shipping them out into the world. Now they need you to access, to allow access to new markets, okay? So um, first of all, you get free access today when you enroll in the importing from Africa program, you get free access to that marketplace. So this is an add-on to the program. Um, we have partnered with them and we have vetted them. So that means, you know, we have really gone through the process to see everything is established well, um, their, um, their business licenses, their import exporting licenses, their, their certificates. We have also partnered with 
those who have already export experience. That is very important because there are a lot of African producers there, but not everyone has the standards in terms of quality um, that is required, especially for the West, United States, Canada, um, you know, the European Union. And we have made sure we are starting with those that have export experience and that have the quality certifications. Okay, so we have vetted them. We've gone through that process for you. You can simply select your product on our platform and then contact the supplier directly through the website. We are in the middle of creating a network around this so we can continue to add new trustworthy African suppliers and their products. So the marketplace that we have created um, will have more African suppliers and products added. Just a few days ago, we added uh, another five, six products from Namibia. And so this is a continuous effort. So the marketplace will grow and the marketplace is there for importers. So this is not for you to, you know, to order one single product to purchase it for yourself. It is to order samples in order to do business and start importing. Access number three, you get access to checklists and email templates. So maybe you may be wondering, okay, I'm emailing this supplier in Africa. What do I say now? I go through the contact form, but what do I say? Or the buyer, what do I say? Guess what? We have put email templates together that you can just copy paste and then you adjust them according to your own product or your own demand. We have checklists because I realized that many of you are new to this. So checklists in order, uh, you know, what to do, what to do first, what to do second, and to make sure you are not leaving any steps out. Access number four to success stories and lessons. I think this is something of huge value. We have collected success stories of African importers out there who share our stories in terms of they have started from scratch, they wanted to leave jobs, they started with no um, prior experience, and they wanted to support Africa, and they have reached somewhere. They have left their jobs. In most cases, they were able to leave their jobs um, between you know, 12 to 18 months and to replace the income that they have in their had in their in, in their jobs. Um, but having said that, that is, um, you know, um, the tool that you see on this picture is before we had this program. So they didn't even have the guidance. So I believe you can actually get successful much faster than that. But these success stories are really priceless. And uh, I've shared the one with, uh, you know, Honora, this is his warehouse. I mean, this is how you can uh, really quickly advance in your, in your new business. Access number five, you get hands-on support and mentorship. First of all, via our private Facebook group where you can ask questions 24 seven and guess what? You will remain in the community, all right? And, number, and, and, and also part of that mentorship is the monthly live mentorship by African importers. And that is something new we added to the program. Um, and we still did not increase the cost of the program. We left the program at the same price. And I was so determined to make sure we're getting more success stories. So what we've done is we've added some of the importers and, you know, I've introduced some of them before, and they will actually meet you each month live on Zoom. And they will train you and they will answer all your importing questions. Because in the beginning, when you start a new business, you will have a lot of questions, but you will be trained. Um, I, I will, you know, look in maybe here, here and there, I will come in and also train you on, on business, but you will be mainly trained by people who actually know what they're talking about, which is importing in real terms. You know, the struggles they went through, you know, Ati, for example, said, oh, you know, I got the package and the, the oil had all leaked out. I mean, this is the kind of experience. Okay, so what he had to do in order to make sure it was properly packaged. Oh, these people are full of lessons and they can teach you to do it the right way. So you do not um, you know, fall into, into the mistakes that could be easily avoided. And when you come together with these life mentors, you also come together with the community, just as we do now in Zoom. Because guess what? You know, starting a business is not easy. 
And a lot of people will not understand what you're doing or even support you. And it can get lonely. And so it is so crucial to have a, a community of, um, of like-minded people that support you and that are on the same journey. So we basically created an Africa business in a box and we have done most of the preparatory work for you. You just need to identify the, the product, get the samples and then start selling. And we show you how to do that. So Dr. Hanad, what is my investment to on, enroll in the program? I'm sure you may be wondering, all right? So the Africa business in a box, the importing from Africa program. Well, let's first look at the market value you get. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because guess what? Watch me and learn, learn how I sell, okay? This is the market value you will get. The importing course online, any importing course online generally sells for about $2,000. I've checked in importing courses. And as I said, none of them were on Africa. They were on China and the United States and globally. 2,000 US dollars. That's the market value. That's how much they sell for. Access to reliable suppliers that we have vetted for you. Well, I would say this could be another $2,000, either because you need to travel to Africa to find them or because you're spending a lot of time on researching them. And guess what? In business, time is money. The product list, the email, the templates, the checklist, all of that is worth another 200. The success stories and the valuable insights that you get from other importers worth $1,000 and the life monthly group mentorship where importers are teaching you, training you, and answering your questions. They're mentoring and coaching you. That is at least, actually it's more, worth more than 2000 if you really ask me in, in the coaching and training world. But let's say it's worth at least $2,000. And besides, there's no online course or program or platform like this anywhere we are pioneering something together. The total market value is 7,200 US dollar. Hands down, that is the market value if you would be um, getting it from all sides and all directions. That is how much the market puts um, you know, value out there in, 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 in this uh, context. So what you also should know is that you get lifetime access. So if you enroll once, you get lifetime access to the program and the mentorships, the coaches, the trainers. Now, obviously, the Africa Business Jump Starters, I'm not going to charge you 7,200 US dollars. You may be wondering what it is. You're probably thinking, what is my investment into, this, into myself? Because it's a self-investment. That's very important to understand. You're investing in yourself. So you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, dear Africa Business Jump Starters? Your investment today is 497 US dollars. Today, the entire importing from Africa program is immediately yours for just 497 US dollars. And yes, there is a payment plan, a six month payment plan where you can get started today for just $89 and you can get started with this immediately. So you get ex access to everything. If you pay the $89 today, you get immediate access to everything today. Now, let me quickly pause here and um, share uh, the link with you for those of you who are already saying, this is amazing, let's get in this, you know, if you already know it's a yes, I'm sharing the link with you right here. For those of you on YouTube, bear with me, bear with me. Uh, I will share it on YouTube as well in my screen and in the comment section after the live, okay? Now, this is really incredible value and I've never ever offered it for that price at $89. The reason why I'm doing this now is because of the pandemic. All right. I know how many people um, have uncertainty in their jobs. Um, I know how many of you are thinking of um, 
you know, really changing your lives as a result of, of that. And you were reflecting. And that is the reason why I have decided to offer it at $89 payment plan for the first time ever. All right. Now, um, so you can now go on the link that I just shared with you. All right. Um, you will find it left, right, center, above, um, wherever you're watching this. And if you are already ready, then click on the link 